Today's video is this king size bed I made, all out of Home Depot lumber. It was a quick and easy Christmas gift, so let's get right into it. First you'll want to remove all staples. Next up, I sent my 7 2x12s through the planer. If you don't have a planer, you could skip this step and do a lot of sanding, but these boards were pretty rough, so I don't recommend it. Planing down those seven boards created a ton of sawdust. I think it was at least three wheelbarrows full. After I got them planed down, I went over to my comically undersized joiner and did the best I could. The roller system did help here, but if I was going to do it again, I think I would ask my neighbor for some help. Now that one side's been joined, I can go ahead and run it through my table saw and clean up that last edge. Cleaning up these boards was quite the workout, but it really will save a lot of time later on. Once I had all four sides square, I took a look at each board and marked the best side and cut it down to its final width. I think these boards came out to be about 10 and a quarter inches wide. For the final task of the night, I split two boards right down the middle, each side being about 5 inches wide. And I did this instead of buying 2x6s because I wanted them all to look the same. I took one of the four halves and cut it down to the thickness of the board, so it was about 1 and a quarter inches. The next morning, I started cutting down the lumber to the lengths I needed for the bottom frame. I laid out the platform and secured it with pocket hole screws. pieces down to their final lengths. I always lay everything out and make sure it looks good before screwing it all together. I used a lot of pocket holes to put the base together and I highly recommend this new clamping jig they have for anyone that does the same. I 
think the spacing on these were about six inches and that platform should be very secure. I use two pocket holes in each corner just to try to line everything up. Before screwing everything down, I used a square and a tape measure to make sure everything looked good. I screwed it down one side at a time, making sure everything stayed lined up. All the pre-processing of the lumber really comes into play here. The straighter the boards are, the better time you're going to have. For the corners, I got these black angle brackets. They're about eight inches long. I marked and pre-drilled everything. You do not want these corners cracking. I chose these because they should be really strong and easier to take apart than pocket hole screws. Finally, I got to stand it up here and take a look at the top side. This is another instance where having an extra set of hands would have been great. Once I got the base turned over, I took a look at all the corners and joints and I was really happy with how they turned out. I cut down two 2x3s for slat supports and then notched the ends so they would fit around the brackets. I used a cut off end from the slat to set the height, clamped it down, pre-drilled everything, and screwed it in place. For the center support, I used a 2x6 and some Tico joist hangers. With all the supports in place, I moved on to cutting all the slats. I think there were 20 slats and I spaced them about an inch and a half from each other. Cut off from the 2x6 for the spacing, pre drilled everything, and secured it down with some inch and a half deck screws.
get near the end, make sure you're concentrating and don't drop anything through the slats. Once all the slats were in place, I used a staple gun and this flat nylon strapping to keep it all together. I ended up doing three straps here. Um, you could have done this by hand, but it would have taken much longer and your hand would be very sore. I only have room to work in one side of my garage, so once again, I have to pick it up and move it out of the way. That pretty much completes the base. Now we can focus on the headboard. I started by cutting some two by threes down and framing up the outside. I also trimmed a four by eight sheet of OSB down to about 86 inches. I purposely framed it up this way with the top and bottom being full length so that I could square it up. Later on, I'm going to cut it in half. To hold the two pieces together, I drilled these holes and I'm going to use some carriage bolts and big washers. I laid the sheet of OSB down and used it to square up the 2x3 framing. I went ahead and screwed it down all the way around the perimeter, making sure not to put any screws anywhere I was going to cut it apart later. Next up, I flipped it over so I could add some bracing. Once again, I used pocket holes and screws and I spaced these up about four inches from the bottom. With the framing done, I go ahead and use a level as a straight edge and cut it in half. What I'm using for the headboard is going to be 1x4 furring strips, so I head back to the planer and clean it up as best I can. Again, if you don't have a planer, you could get away without doing this step, but you will spend a lot of time sanding. Another benefit of planing these down is they get a little bit thinner and lose a good bit of weight. These little furring strips weren't worth joining, so I just set the table saw where it would clean up one edge. Using furring strips is probably the cheapest option, but it definitely takes a lot of time to process them and you get a lot of scraps. Once I got the first side done, I took them right back so they could be cut down to their final size. Um, I tried to keep these as wide as possible and just make sure both edges were nice and clean. I took about six pieces and cut 45s on the ends so I could lay everything. 
everything out and make sure it was going to go down correctly. The first couple pieces are always the hardest, but if you take your time, make sure everything's lined up, everything after that will be really easy. I use my circular saw to quickly rough cut the ends. I just use regular wood glue and some inch and a half staples in my air gun. Finally, after I got all the boards nailed down, I took my cordless router with a flush trim bit and cleaned up all the edges. At last, it was time to wrestle this thing around one more time and see how it all fit together. When it all came together, everything lined up perfectly and I was very pleased. To attach the headboard, I drilled right through this bracing and the base and used hair tools again. The last board that I ripped in half gets cut down to final size. I think it was about four and a half inches. I made sure everything lined up, clamped it down, and pre-drilled from the inside to secure it. I repeated the same process for the top, and for this, you really just want to make sure it looks good from the front. This last little piece here is to cover up the seam on the front. You don't really need it, but I think it looks good. Together. Not finished yet, but so far I'm really happy with it. Now on to everyone's favorite part, the same.
this bed is gonna have a walnut finish, so I went through all the boards and filled it in with this wood filler that's walnut color. One final sanding here after the wood filler and it's ready for stain. To start the staining process, I wipe everything down with a tack cloth. To stain this bed, I used a sponge, made sure to get complete coverage, and did not leave any drip. For the top coat, I used polyurethane. This is about a 70-30 mix. It was very cold outside and I wanted to make sure it was gonna dry. I did about five light coats. I really enjoyed this polyurethane finish. It went on easy, dried quickly, and seems to be nice and durable. Here's some final shots of the bed. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's gonna last a very long time and was relatively cheap compared to some of the beds you see for sale out there. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.